Hey, hi again, and here I am in a brand new folder. So, an empty folder. And if you remember, and you should remember when we built a website with Flask, you should remember how a Flask directory is structured. So, we have this templates folder where the HTML files will go, and we have a static folder as well where we put the CSS files or JavaScript files if we have. And then our Python file would go like uh, straight here in this main folder. I said first I'll build the front end, so uh, I'll create the HTML files first without creating any Python file. Mm, and you know that we use Atom for web application. So uh, inside the templates folder, I'll create a file and let's call this index.html. And also a file in static, let's say main.css. So the CSS file and the index.html file. In this lecture, um, we will build the HTML part, so those input fields that you saw in the previous lectures. When someone visits your website, your URL, and there is a file named index.html in the main directory of your web server, that file will be open as the home page. So just to be clear. Now let's go ahead and build this HTML script. This is the first thing you pass there, always. So the document type, HTML, and then the HTML tags, and the closing tag. So I assume you understand HTML. HTML is very easy. If you've never done that, um, you can still follow me in this lecture by just typing what I type. But it's good to, to go through a basic tutorial with HTML. HTML is way easier than Python, so that shouldn't be a problem for you to learn. And normally you pass here uh, the um, language and English. So, And now everything goes between here. So let's put a title, which will show on the browser bar. Yep. And then you have the head of your HTML script. Uh, there you can put the links to your CSS files or your JavaScript files. So that's what I'm going to do now. So uh, you need to use the link tag. And then I can put here the relative path to my CSS file. So that's how my HTML script will know where to look for a CSS styling. And so we are here in index.html. So we need to go one level up. So two dots and one slash. That this means we go one level up. And then we enter the static folder. Yeah. And then we access the main.css file. Yeah, that should do it. Uh, you need to declare that you're working with a style sheet and at the moment we have an empty CSS file so that will not take any effect for now our, our HTML page will be a plain HTML without colors and anything and yeah here we are done with the meta part so now we start writing the part where we'll display the content and the part that displays the content it goes inside the body tags like that and now everything goes inside these tags we now start thinking from up uh, to the bottom of our page so the first thing we had there was this title that says uh, collecting heights uh, you, you can write anything but and we could create that with an h1 tag so a big font heading but before I do that I would like to uh, use a division so a division is to organize your, your HTML uh, elements better. And this also allows you for better referencing from your CSS script. So this division will wrap up the entire container, the entire page. And I'll put that name, container. So with that name, I'll refer from the CSS class. And then everything goes inside this uh, division. So H1, mm, H1, collecting heights. And maybe another heading there with a smaller font. So H3. 
So you, we want to tell the user what to do with those uh, input entries there. So let's say, please fill the entries to get on height. You can tweak this text to whatever you like, and also the data that we are expecting from the user. So maybe you don't want to uh, collect heights, but another attribute. So feel free to do that. And yeah, this hmm, should be fine now if I try that. Show in Explorer, yeah, index. Yeah, seems to be working. So let's go ahead now and add the form with those input entries. And that is implemented using a form tag. So like that. Uh, now this form, this expects uh, the user to, to enter some data. Uh, so uh, you need to perform an action then after the, the user presses the button of this form. So when the user presses the button of this form, uh, what you want to do is you want to go to this uh, URL, which in this case is just a file that we'll be creating in the templates folder. So here we'll have like a success success.html file. Yeah. And basically what we'll have here is uh, let me copy this just for being quick. And basically this uh, will have not this once, but remove the form closing tag. So we could have here some simple text uh, thanking the user uh, like thank you for your sub me submission and maybe a break line there so uh, we go to the next line you'll receive an email with the survey results shortly and yeah don't forget to close the p tag like that and if i try this yeah, so it's it's a plain text for now, but the CSS will stylize it later, so don't worry. And so this page will be open when the user presses that uh, button. So let's go ahead and create that button. But before we create the button, we create the we have to create the input forms. And there's also something important to pass here. So you want to pass the method, with this, which is post. So normally you, you, you have uh, get methods when you just want, you, you call a file from the server. So when you open a URL, like you open this index.html URL, and you get the HTML element, so you see the page. This is a get request you're just getting. But when you send data through the web servers, like, like we're doing in this case, we are sending the, uh, the email and the height. So this is a post request and you want to specify that here explicitly. Now to create those two input forms that we have there, uh, you need to use input tags uh, like that. And uh, you don't have to uh, write a, an opening tag and a closing tag. Uh, you can just go ahead and write everything here. So the attributes of the input tag in here inside these brackets. So that will have a title. And a title is shown when, when the user holds the cursor in the input for a while. And you want to say something like, maybe your email will be safe with us. And then you have something called a placeholder. And that is the default text that the input shows. So let's say, enter your email address. And then you have another attribute called type. And that should be email in our case. So um, uh, type is important because if you put, you could put text here, but if you if you put email, uh, your input will be able to validate the email address of your user. So it will say if the user has not entered a format that doesn't look like an email, he'll get some uh, pop-up saying that uh, you have to put something that looks like an email. And then you have name, and this is, we can put anything here, email, name, let's say, and this will be used by Python to pull off the email address that, that the user enters in the input. So with Python, you'll say something like, 
uh, give me the value of the input where name is email name is equal to this string. Uh, yeah, basically that's it. And you need to put this to make this a required field. So uh, the user cannot press submit if he hasn't entered this uh, data. And this remains like that. So uh, yeah, basically that's it. If you want, uh, you want to break line so that uh, in the next line you write the next input form. And I'll copy this one here. Put it there mm. and yeah let's change this to your data will be safe with us and uh, this has to be enter your mm, height in centimeters and yeah we need to change the type here and you can either put text there or you could put number Putting text in there uh, would require that you convert that uh, string into an integer or a flow to, uh, uh, in Python when you write a Python script. However, that, that's not the problem there. The problem is if you input text, um, uh, you cannot apply some uh, restrictions of the input that the user will enter. So if the user wants to enter a thousand there with a, a text type here in the HTML, you'll not be able to check for that. But if you put number then you can apply some uh, minimum attribute uh, so you can say uh, don't put anything below 50 centimeters and also uh, don't put anything above let's say 300 uh, centimeters so that's uh, three meters you can tweak these values to whatever you want so, mm. and also if you want the user to uh, also enter something like uh, 170 centimeters point one you'd want to pass the step attribute there and specify how many decimal points you want to allow the user to enter so if you put for instance uh, 0 0.1 you'd only allow one decimal point there if you if you put 0 0.01 that will be more decimal points however i think it's enough accuracy to have uh, centimeters for the height so I'll just remove this and just restrict the user to enter uh, whole numbers good and then um, this would be height name uh, yeah uh, lastly we want to input the button and then we try out the form so to see what we have this far and that would be a button tag and the closing tag and between these two uh, goes the text that you want to display above the button so submit and then you need to pass some attributes here so the type of the button would be submit so this defines the role that this button has over this form so the button will submit the entries that the user will input in this input boxes that's basically it so that's our form and let's see how this goes. So, uh, Control R to reload it. Uh, yeah, we have the inputs there. So, don't worry if this box is smaller than this. This is an uh, email type, so this has to be bigger. But then later we will make this the same with CSS. And so, let's try something. Let's uh, fake email address. So, if you pass, pass something like this, you'd get something like please include an uh, ad in the email so let's put something that looks like an email and here you can put the range if you put 40 um, you'll see that uh, it says that the value must be greater or equal than uh, or 250 so let's put 200 there submit oh yeah it's working so we were sent to the success.html page because that's what we assigned to the action attribute here of the form tag. Good, this is working great. Uh, yeah, basically that's it. This is about building the HTML part. Now in the next lecture we'll go ahead and do this CSS so that the index.html and the success.html page will look much better than they look now. So see you in the next lecture.